So we want to look at intensive data analysis with pivot table. We are going to be exploring analysis with pivot table in Excel. It promises to be a very great um, journey and exciting one at that too, because we are going to look at what this pivot table is, what it can help us to do, what are the features, and how to use it right from raw data to visualization. So for our learning objectives, we hope to achieve these and many more. Number one, participants will understand the concept of pivot tables and their importance in data analysis. You will learn step-by-step -step guide on how to create pivot tables right from raw data. You will know how to explore and summarize large data sets efficiently with pivot tables. You will learn how to tailor pivot tables with formatting, filtering, and sorting options. You will also understand how to create custom calculations within pivot tables to derive insights and trends. You will also know how to create interactive data, filtering them with data slicers. And then finally, we will also look at how to refresh our pivot table and get updated data from the source. To help us cover these learning objectives, we have the following topics. One, we are going to create a pivot table. We are going to filter a pivot table, sort it, work with multiple value fields, add custom calculations to a pivot table, refresh and update a pivot table. We will create a pivot chart and then use slicers to filter them interactively. Now, what is pivot table and why do we use it? Summarily, I've provided this description of what pivot table is. It's a statistic tool that helps you to summarize and reorganize selected columns and rows of data in a spreadsheet or a database table. The tool does not actually change the original source of data it simply pivots it, just the way the word means uh, is pivots. It pivots, it turns it, the data to different perspectives so that you can have different views of your data. They are very important because they allow you to filter and extract significance about the data set that you are working with. It can allow anyone to look at their data in a number of ways, like I said. Pivot it, you look it from this angle, you look it from the other angle. At the time we'll delve into creating this, you will see how exciting it is and very easy to use in analyzing the data. Now, the pivot table has a task pane, and I'm going to briefly describe the different fields, call them the field areas. So there are basically four of them. First one is where this arrow is pointing to now. It's called the rules areas. And this is the left uh, uh, most section of the pivot table downward. It gives you the unique fields of any value field that you select. And it acts as the primary rules for data organization. Each rule that is created has a header and it groups and categorizes the data accordingly. If you have a data set that looks at sales data, you may decide to put your product category in one area, uh, these uh, rules, and then it generates rules for each unique product category. Now let's look at the second one, which is called the column area. Again, the arrow is pointing at that column area. This is the area that is just above, um, right on my own screen now, it's above the values area, okay? It's functions similarly like the columns, 
uh, uh, sorry, just the way area, um, area, the row areas function the same way these column areas functions, but it arranges them in columns. And of course, it brings out the unique field. It provides you an additional dimension for data segmentation. For instance, getting your uh, cat product category in the row, you can now drag the region to the column area and it creates a separate column for each region. By the time we use our data set to demonstrate this, you will have a better understanding. Now let's go to the third one, which is the value area. This is where the real analysis happens. Here you can have different values like the sum, like the count, that's getting the, um, the uh, frequencies, the sums, and several others. We are going to be looking at this in a short while. And this happens, but this calculation happened by simply dragging these fields, dropping them over here, dropping them over here, and dropping them over here. By the time we begin to, to um, show the, um, the operations of uh, pivot table, we are going to let you know by default what you get in this value, whether it's sums or counts, as the case may be, depending on the nature of the field that you are selecting over here. Now, the next one is uh, the filter area. Now, this filter area is an area where you can use to filter out particular segment of your data. It is enables you to apply filter to your data, controlling what information is displayed in the pivot table. Again, you, we may decide to look like the data set that we'll be using. We have countries, we have the approach in the campaign, and then we have the different groups. The countries are grouped into different uh, groups. Okay, by the time we begin to select the groups, it will be displaying for you the countries that are in that group, okay, and then giving us the uh, corresponding values. Now, let's look at some of the operations. The interaction that we get by this arrangement within the pivot table, it gives you a tremendous flexibility in analyzing your data. And what happens is simply by clicking these fields, because this represents your real data headers, the data set that you're going to be working with. Remember we said that the pivot table helps you to tweet or to pivot your table, but it does not change the resource. What you have in the resource does not change. So now let's look at the operations, the interaction of, um, just a minute, let me just get this back on. Okay, so this is the filter area. So the interaction that happens between the pivot table and uh, these fields within the pivot table, bring me this field, these fields within the pivot table gives the user tremendous flexibility to analyze your data simply by clicking and dragging and then dropping them in the different fields you are already getting different values and then you can pivot it to however um, um, you want to look at it say for instance we bring this there are three uh, basic approaches and then there are groups so if I bring the country, it gives us the unique countries, okay? And then um, I decide to get the number of enrollees here. It just gives us the very number of enrollees for each country, all right? And uh, if we decide to come and apply filter here, say we are only interested in the grassroots. So for each of them, it will give you the values of the grassroots. To say we are interested in um, the national, and you click, it gives you different values. And if you are interested in the regional, it gives you different values. We may also decide to put the uh, um, filter to the country, bring the approach here, and then um, 
Of course, let's take away filter from approach because once you apply it, it remains there until you clear it. And then we decide to say, okay, for each country, we want to be looking at the countries one after the other, for instance. So let's say Benin Republic, these are the respective values, the grassroots campaign, national campaign, and regional campaign. So you can see that by simply clicking and dragging um, these fields into the respective uh, um, pivot pain, uh, task pain areas, you are able to generate wonderful um, views of your pivot table. Now, uh, uh, there's something I want to say from onsite. Now we have described these different areas. By default, you know that these are the headers of our original table, right? So if we click anyone here, it can automatically either come to the rules or the values, okay? Depending on the type of field that this is. If it is text field, for instance, approach, under approach, you have text values. It will come straight to rules. The same thing with groups, the same thing with country. Now, just by clicking them, you see where they are going to. They are all coming right under the, the, the rule. Now, for this field, which contains numbers, it will automatically come here by default once I check it and it gives you the sum. So by just clicking it intuitively, it has brought it here because it knows that it's a number and then it's going to give you the sum. Now, when you, if it's not sum that you want, you can click here, go to value field setting. What do you want? What value do you want for this field? You click this, like I say, comes uh, by default with the sum. Let's see what happens. Let's try all of them and see what happens. I also encourage you to explore because this is how you get to learn how the uh, any kind of tool or feature in Excel works. So when I click this, we are looking at counts. It's telling us that there are 24 times that these ones occur. Been in public occur 24 times, and it's in group C. The same thing for here. So every country here occurred 24 times. Now let's see other things that can happen. Can it give us average? Let's see. So this is the average. If you are interested in the average, then you use this. Again, well, let's go to this. So you are going to ask what's the maximum for each of these categories. It's telling you that the approach that we have selected, I mean, for this particular country, this approach for this country, the grassroots approach is 8737 uh, for group. For regional, is 9853, 9878. And then for regional, is 9853. So by this, you can look as, okay, uh, which one gives you the highest yield as a country by merely asking that question. Now, let's look at the, the big uh, data set that we have. So this is data set. And there are over 1,290 records. If you are asked a simple question of uh, which of the campaigns yielded the most and release for each country, by simply looking at this, using this, you are able to get that. Which approach yielded the most enrollee, all right? So let's say which approach 
yielded the most enrollee for each country. So this is a very good question that we can use to run our analysis. So for Benin Republic, you see that this is 879878. So of course, for group for this regional, uh, for this Benin Republic, regional had the highest yielding approach. All right, so um, now let's look at what pivot table can actually help us to achieve. Like we can already see some of them. First, it helps you to um, summarize your data. You can use it to sort your data in a particular order. You filter dates, uh, your data, uh, this is data. You filter your data to focus on selected data of interest. And it also helps you to remove the outlier so that you can focus on the more um, interesting ones. It helps you to count occurrences as the frequency like we demonstrated how many times each country occurred. And it helps you to total, look at it and we said the sum. So it can give you the sum of the release. Doing custom calculations. Or if you look at the table, there are a lot of things we want to get, but then it is not here. Assuming we want to find out what is the percentage of a group, um, national group, to the entire population or the entire enrollees that country got. We don't have it here, but pivot table can help us do that with custom calculations. It also helps us to reorganize our data in a particular fashion, and then we can group them to view them in groups. The data that we have is already, uh, we have grouped the countries, but we may decide to group something else. We might decide to group um, the dates, when we decide to group the end release for each country, we might decide to take those ones that fall between one to 1,000 in release. And then we are grouping them in one one thousands or in five five thousands. So if a country that had up to 20,000 in release, you can view all the release in different segments. Say the first number one, to 20, I mean, to 5,000 and release, 5,001 to 10,000 and so on and so forth. So these are some of the benefits of using pivot table. Now we would like to um, share some of the best practices, the things that will help you to use pivot table uh, efficiently uh, with minimal issues. Number one, all your columns, they must have header field names or titles. Just like this data set that we have, you can see that this is the header for the approach, the type of approach they use, and that the countries were grouped. So this is group one, group A, B, C, D, and so on and so forth. The header is group. Here is the name of the countries. The header is country. Here is the month. So you can see that every one of them, they have headers. Then the headers titles should also be unique. Okay, I'm going to show you something now. Uh, if I come over here and write month, see what's going to happen to this month. You say it's two because there's one here already. Okay, there's read month here. And if I should go ahead and write country, it does not take more than one uh, name of a header. Okay, so it has to be unique. So it's either you use month two or you use something else. Typically, we can get people's names, then we are specifying surname, last name, middle name. All right, so those are some of the best practices. Other ones are they are your units of headers. They should be uniform. Okay, so if we have a header here where we have, let's say, amount, for instance, amount, and you want to write 100 USD, then here you have, uh, uh, let's say, 200 Naira. No, this will not work. Even though it accepts it, but it does not work when you are running a 
a data analysis with pivot table. So if you want uh, to use this for a particular unit, use it. If you have for currencies, for instance, and you have different currencies, create different um, headers for each currency, right? So that's another best practice. Avoid blank cells, especially in the first column. Remove any totals or subtotals in the data rows because your pivot table will do the summarizing that you need. By the time you insert your pivot table and you begin to drag in data, you see that the pivot table is already having the total column and total rows. And for this very last tip, it's always good to leave rows and columns around your pivot table, okay? So just like um, in our operations here, you can see I left a row here. This is, a, I mean, a column here. And there is there are two rows over here. If I am to drop something else, I must definitely leave something here. And then I can continue here. And the same thing over uh, below here. So these are some of the best practices that will help us to um, encounter less issues when working with pivot table. All right, so the final thing we want to do on this uh, segment is to learn how to insert a pivot table. Remember in our operations, we just worked on a pivot table that was already inserted. So let's look at how to create a pivot table. You can create a pivot table from your data set and your data set may either be already uh, contained in a table that's an official Excel table or a range. For this case, this is a, an official table. All right, so uh, we can, um, we can look, find that uh, when we click inside here, we see this table here, okay? We see that there is a table here over here. And uh, if when I click outside the table, it disappears. So that tells me that this is Excel official table. So what do I do? I go straight to insert on this, my ribbon over here. This tab here is insert. And on my extreme left, I don't know how uh, your own version of Excel is. Different versions may have it located at different uh, sites. So for mine, it's located at the far left. And so when I click this, yeah, Excel is going to intuitively um, predict that since my cursor was inside this table, this may probably be the table that I want to use to insert my pivot table. And so I need to be sure that I selected all the data. So let me scroll down to the very last bottom. And of course, I have selected the entire data and I'm okay with it. So this is the create table uh, pivot table wizard. So the first thing we are looking at is selecting the table or the range uh, address, okay? Remember that anytime you see these dashed lines around your, your selection, it's a mere suggestion by Excel. So if that's okay, you proceed. If it's not okay, you can collapse this and then go somewhere and select whatever you want to select, okay? So again, I'm going to start from the beginning again. And I'm clicking right inside here, which we did. And I'm clicking here. Remember from my insert tab, I see this option here. Now we are back to where we were before. I'm sure it has selected the entire data for me. Then the next option is, I need to choose where this pivot table will be placed, okay? For beginners, it's always good to use the default set, which is new worksheet. I could just go here and click on existing worksheet. And then I will now tell it, you can see it's blinking. I could now tell it where I want it. I could click here, I could click here, I could click anywhere, but that's not what we are going to be doing now. We want to place it on a new worksheet. 
Now, when I click this new worksheet and I hit OK button, on this my active worksheet, a new worksheet is going to be inserted just by the left of it, containing this new uh, pivot table. And so when I do this, it creates a new one and drops my pivot table here. And again, here we have our task pane containing the different fields. Now, as time goes on in this uh, course, we'll be discussing uh, some of these options. When you click here, well, once this pivot table is active, you see this pivot table analyze button is here, the same thing here. And then you also see this. A good number of things are under this pivot table analyze. When I click outside it, it goes off. So it is to tell you that there are two environments right now. By inserting this pivot table, there is a pivot table environment and there is the normal spreadsheet environment. If I want to work on this pivot table, I need to click it to activate the pane. However, there are times that you'll be working and this is blocking your way. You may be working even on um, the pivot table, but you, you are not adding or subtracting anything from the pivot table because this is what you use to add and subtract. So but if you're not using it and it's blocking your way, you can exit. When you exit, it goes off. And when you need it back, assuming you are working this way and you need it, just click here, come to your pivot table, uh, um, pivot table analyze, see this your field list. You click to show and it pops up again. And then you can begin to do your analysis. All right, so this is where we draw the curtain for this particular module. Remember that we are still going to be discussing a uh, uh, very detailed aspect of this training. We are going to still look at, um, after we have now created a pivot table, we are going to be selecting ranges and do a lot of uh, data um, wrangling, just dropping here using the fields, changing the way the pivot table looks to see what suits us. Now, the thing about the pivot table is that a particular perspective may not suit you. So you keep changing them, keep flipping them until you get what you want, all right? So, and sometimes if you know exactly what you want, you just go straight, plug in your fields in the right areas, and then you get what you want, all right? So the next, we are going to be looking at how to manipulate the pivot table talking about the layout, grouping, the sorting, the filtering, and all the other things that we are going to be uh, looking at to help us achieve our learning objectives. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video. We are going to come up with uh, subsequent ones and uh, it will give us, it will, we will have very wonderful value for the time we spent watching this movie. Thank you.